Recently, a local charity and a local venue, uh, they got together, they reached out to me to see if I could help them stream a concert. It was actually a solo artist. Now, I was under a great time crunch to try and pull this off, so all I had was what I actually owned or um, anything I could borrow. So, I had my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K. Uh, my buddy brought along his helium censored red. I had some cables, a laptop. Um, the venue had an audio board, but the, one of the most crucial things to getting this whole project done was this box, the Blackmagic Web Presenter. This box is great. It's gonna take your DSLRs, your cinema cameras, any camera you might own, transform it so that your streaming software recognizes that camera as a streaming device. It's also going to take your signal and it's going to be able to transmit it in 720, which is essential for streaming right now because it's going to lessen the amount of bandwidth that's being absorbed, which is so important. As far as inputs go, well, we have an HDMI and an SDI. And it's also gonna have loop outs of both for whatever you might be using as a monitor. Now, if you do have two devices that you're trying to stream with, you need to make sure one's an HDMI or an SDI. And if that's not the case, they're both SDI or HDMI, uh, you're gonna need to have like an Aja box or a decimator that's gonna take an SDI signal, put out HDMI, or taking an HDMI signal and put out SDI. If you don't have a monitor, of course, you can always use the screen that comes on the front. But actually, that's kind of a lie because uh, this box, whenever you buy it, if you buy it in its base form, it's not going to come with any of this on the front. You're actually going to need to buy the Terranex Mini Smart Panel. But what it's going to do is it's going to allow you to live punch between your two video sources. It's going to give you audio options, actually even the ability to add gain if you need to add it to your stream and it's gonna be able to give you live feedback of what is actually being streamed, uh, whatever your source is on that little screen right there. So I highly recommend, actually, no, I think it's essential that you use the Terranex um, Mini Smart Panel if you decide to get one of these boxes. And I mentioned audio, well, a great thing this box has is it has an XLR in. So if you're dealing with a soundboard like I was with a live concert, you can mix the audio send a mono out from the board into the box. The box will turn it into a stereo signal and it'll send along with your video through your stream. This is absolutely a crucial function for me. So with all that being said, let's go ahead, plug this thing in. I'll show you how it works and uh, let's get a stream started. We're gonna give some power to the Blackmagic web presenter. Then we take a USB 2, which is type A to type B mail cable, uh, the kind that you would normally find like on a printer. Plug it into the port that says USB webcam. So all I have is the camera that I'm obviously recording on, the Blackmagic Pocket uh, Cinema 4K, and then the FS7. But I'm gonna take this FS7 and I'm gonna go HDMI in to the web presenter. I can see a signal. I have a video signal from the FS7 that's pointed straight at me. Now. We're gonna to go to the laptop and we're gonna set up a software called OBS. But on the technical side, that's it. Uh, we're ready to start a stream as far as uh, hardware goes. So here I am on the FS7. It's running through the Blackmagic web presenter. What you're gonna do is you're gonna download a software called OBS. It's gonna to talk to, it's gonna work with Twitch, Facebook Live, Periscope, any of the things that you're streaming. And whenever you first download it, it's gonna ask you to open this which is the auto configuration wizard and you're going to optimize for streaming this is unless you are more concerned about having whatever you're streaming the product afterwards of course you can go ahead and optimize just for recording but we're talking about streaming so optimize for streaming right now and then the next thing right now i have the fs7 in 59.97 frames per second 60p uh, so i have that right now um, the setting I picked is either 60 or 30, but prefer 60 when possible. I don't want to tie up too much bandwidth. Um, then I'm using my current resolution. So next thing it's going to ask for is your stream key. Now you're going to have to go to Twitch, like what I'm using, 
you can see the Twitch option right there. Um, or Facebook Live, whatever. You're gonna need a stream key. You're gonna put that into OBS and you hit next. And then it's gonna start applying a few different settings. It's actually gonna test your bandwidth. It's gonna test your stream in a few different cities. So this takes a few minutes. So pet your dog if you have one. Or your cat. Go ahead and hit apply settings. So here we are in OBS. We're already ready to stream. You can see the start streaming right here. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to sources and you're gonna hit the plus sign. You're gonna hit video capture device. Now go ahead and hit okay on that unless you wanna rename it to whatever you have personally. Under device, this is what normally pops up. It's called the FaceTime HD camera. And that's gonna be the built-in camera on your laptop. Well, since we have the Blackmagic web presenter, it's tricked OBS into thinking that we have another web device, even though I'm using a uh, Cinema Pocket 4K by Blackmagic. Blackmagic web presenter, we're gonna hit that. And then I'm gonna select use buffering because I prefer that. And I'm going to build the frame. If you have an audio signal like I did from the audio board of the venue into the web presenter, go into settings, and then head over to audio, and then go into your mic auxiliary audio and make sure you select the Blackmagic web presenter. The other big thing that you should know in this step is that you should have the microphones on your camera, which you might usually be using to record like scratch audio. Make sure you turn those off because you don't want any extraneous audio that's not gonna be high quality making its way onto your stream. So we have that set, we hit okay, and then we can go ahead and hit start streaming. Here I am live on the internet and hopefully no one is watching because that would be really kind of embarrassing, but um, you would be able to hear me on the live stream if I had an audio board that had the XLR running into the web presenter, which I don't have here at my house. Um, also, I would be able to live punch between two different cameras right now, but I don't have another camera. All I have is the FF7. And another cool thing about the web presenter is that it allows you to change between a straight cut and a dissolve. So it gives you uh, two options, uh, at least, uh, with different time frames for your dissolves uh, for transitions built in if you do decide to use this thing as a switcher for your live stream. But overall, I think that does it for me. Stay safe. I hope we get out of this. I hope our industry bounces back. I actually, I know it will. Um, but stay healthy. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.